Deborah and Collins were inseparable right from their childhood. Despite their differences, they found comfort in each other's company. Deborah was the daughter of wealthy parents, who owned a large estate filled with every imaginable luxury. She lived in a mansion with tall gates, expansive gardens, and rooms filled with elegant furniture. Her home was a place where every need was met by servants, and where she never had to worry about anything. Collins, in contrast, came from a humble background. He lived in a small, modest house on the other side of town. His home was simple, with worn furniture and only the basics that his hard-working mother could provide. She worked long hours to make ends meet, often doing multiple jobs just to keep food on the table and a roof over their heads. Collins knew the value of every penny and had learned from an early age how to make do with very little. Though their worlds were so different, when Deborah and Collins were together, none of that mattered. They saw past the material things and connected on a level that went beyond their backgrounds. Deborah never made Collins feel small because of where he came from, and Collins never envied Deborah's wealth. Instead, they shared their dreams, laughed together, and found in each other a friendship that was pure and unshakable. Deborah's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Kingston, were never fond of Collins. They had always imagined their daughter growing up surrounded by children from wealthy, influential families like their own. To them, it was important that Deborah associated with those who shared her privileged background, who lived in similar grand houses and attended the same exclusive events. They believed that friendships should be formed within the same social circles, where everyone understood the same lifestyle and values. When they saw Deborah spending time with Collins, a boy from a much poorer family, they were deeply concerned. In their eyes, Collins didn't fit the image of the kind of friend they wanted for their daughter. They worried that he might influence her in ways they didn't approve of, that his humble upbringing might somehow hold her back from the bright future they envisioned for her. To them, Collins seemed out of place in their world, and they couldn't understand what their daughter saw in him. Determined to protect Deborah from what they perceived as a bad influence, Mr. and Mrs. Kingston tried everything to keep the two apart. They enrolled Deborah in activities that would take up her time, hoping to fill her days with other friends from wealthy families. They discouraged her from visiting the places where she might run into Collins, and even instructed their staff to subtly steer her away from any contact with him. But despite all their efforts, the bond between Deborah and Collins remained unbreakable. The more her parents tried to separate them, the more determined the two friends became to stay connected. They found clever ways to meet in secret, slipping away to the fields where they could play without being seen. In those quiet moments, they shared their dreams and hopes, talking about everything from the adventures they wanted to have to the lives they imagined for themselves. No matter how hard the Kingstons tried to control the situation, Deborah and Collins always found a way to be together, proving that their friendship was stronger than any obstacle her parents could put in their way. As Deborah and Collins grew older, their friendship only deepened, but so did the concerns of Deborah's parents. Mr. and Mrs. Kingston began to worry even more about the future. They feared that if Deborah continued to spend time with Collins, their connection might grow into something more serious, something that would be difficult to undo. The idea of their daughter being so closely tied to someone from a much lower social class filled them with anxiety. They imagined all the dreams they had for Deborah slipping away if she remained attached to Collins, whom they considered unsuitable for her. After much discussion and sleepless nights, they decided that the only way to ensure Deborah's future was to send her abroad for her education. They believed that by exposing her to new experiences, new friends, and a different lifestyle, she would naturally drift away from Collins and forget about him. They saw this as a necessary step to secure her future, convinced that the distance would break the bond that worried them so much. When they broke the news to Deborah, she was heartbroken. The thought of leaving her best friend, the person who had been by her side through everything, was unbearable. 
She couldn't imagine her life without Collins, without their long talks, their laughter, and the comfort they found in each other's company. Deborah felt like her world was being torn apart, but she knew she had no choice. Her parents had already made the decision, and there was no way to change their minds. In the days leading up to her departure, Deborah and Collins spent as much time together as they could, trying to make the most of every moment. They walked through the fields where they had played as children, reminiscing about all the adventures they had shared. But there was a heavy sadness in the air, as both of them knew that things were about to change forever. On the day before she left, Deborah made a heartfelt promise to Collins. She looked him in the eyes and told him that no matter how far apart they were, she would never forget him. She assured him that their friendship meant everything to her and that one day, they would see each other again. Collins, holding back tears, made the same promise. He told her that he would wait for her, no matter how long it took, and that nothing could ever make him forget her. With a heavy heart, Deborah boarded the plane, leaving behind everything she knew, including the one person who had always understood her best. As she looked out of the window, watching her hometown fade into the distance, she clutched the memories of Collins tightly, determined to keep him alive no matter where life took her. Years passed, and Deborah's life abroad unfolded in ways she could never have imagined. She threw herself into her studies, excelling in every subject and earning the admiration of her teachers and peers. Her education took her to some of the finest institutions in the world, where she learned about different cultures, languages, and ideas. Deborah traveled to countries she had only read about in books, experiencing new foods, meeting new people, and seeing sights that filled her with wonder. She attended grand events, walked through bustling cities, and explored places steeped in history. Every experience broadened her horizons and shaped her into a confident, knowledgeable young woman. Yet, no matter how exciting her new life was, Deborah never let go of the memories of her childhood and the special bond she shared with Collins. Even in the midst of all her accomplishments, there were moments when her thoughts would drift back to him. She would find herself wondering what Collins was doing, if he was okay, and if he still remembered the promise they had made to each other. Despite the miles between them and the years that had passed, Collins remained in her heart. She often wrote letters to him in her mind, imagining what she would say if she could reach out, but she always hesitated, unsure of how he might have changed or if he even thought of her anymore. Back in their small town, life for Collins continued much as it always had, but with a growing sense of responsibility. While Deborah was exploring the world, Collins was focused on supporting his family and carving out a path for himself. He took on whatever work he could find, whether it was in the fields, in town, or helping neighbors with odd jobs. He never shied away from hard labor, knowing that his efforts were necessary to keep food on the table and to take care of his mother. Though his life was far more modest than Deborah's, Collins found a quiet pride in his work. He learned new skills, gained the respect of those around him, and slowly began to build a reputation as a reliable and hard-working young man. But even as he worked from sunrise to sunset, his thoughts often wandered to Deborah. He would remember the times they spent together, the laughter they shared, and the dreams they once spoke of in the fields. Collins held on to the hope that one day, they would meet again, just as they had promised. As the years went by, the gap between their worlds seemed to grow wider, yet the connection they shared refused to fade. Deborah, with all her achievements and experiences, still carried the memory of Collins with her, while Collins, grounded in the simplicity of his life, never forgot the girl who had been his closest friend. They were living in two very different realities, but in their hearts, the bond they had formed as children remained as strong as ever, waiting for the day when fate might bring them back together. When Deborah finally returned home after so many years abroad, her father, Mr. Kingston, felt a sense of relief and pride. He was convinced that the time and distance had done exactly what he had hoped, they had erased any lingering attachment she might have had to Collins. 
After all, Deborah had spent years immersed in a world of sophistication and privilege, far removed from the simple life she had known as a child. Mr. Kingston believed that the experiences she had gained, the people she had met, and the new opportunities that lay ahead of her would have naturally shifted her focus away from the past. In his mind, Collins was just a distant memory, a part of her childhood that had been left behind as she grew into the accomplished young woman she had become. Confident in this belief, Mr. Kingston didn't give Collins much thought. He assumed that Deborah's return would be the beginning of a new chapter in her life, one where she would be fully engaged in the social circles and future prospects that her parents had carefully planned for her. He imagined her attending elegant parties, meeting influential people, and perhaps even finding a suitable match that would further elevate her status. To him, the idea of Deborah still holding on to a childhood friendship with a boy from a poor background seemed impossible. But one afternoon, as Mr. Kingston was walking through the town, something caught his eye that stopped him in his tracks. There, just ahead of him, was Deborah. She was standing on a quiet street corner, her face lit up with a smile as she talked animatedly with someone. As Mr. Kingston got closer, he recognized the person she was with Collins. He was stunned, almost unable to believe what he was seeing. The years that had passed seemed to disappear in that moment as Mr. Kingston watched his daughter laugh and chat with Collins, just as she had done when they were children. It was as if nothing had changed between them. The ease with which they spoke, the way they seemed completely absorbed in their conversation, and the warmth in Deborah's eyes were all too familiar. It was clear to Mr. Kingston that the bond they shared had not been weakened by time or distance. In fact, it appeared as strong as ever, defying all the efforts he had made to separate them. Seeing Deborah with Collins, Mr. Kingston felt a wave of emotions, shock, disbelief, and even a touch of fear. He had been so certain that their friendship was a thing of the past, a relic of a time that no longer had any place in Deborah's life. But now, as he stood there watching them, he realized that he had underestimated the depth of their connection. Despite all the changes in Deborah's life, Collins had remained a constant presence in her heart, and no amount of distance could change that. This unexpected encounter forced Mr. Kingston to confront the reality that his daughter had grown up, but she had not outgrown her love for the people and memories that had shaped her, including Collins. The realization shook him, leaving him unsure of what to do next. He had hoped to guide Deborah's future according to his own plans, but now he was faced with the undeniable truth that some things were beyond his control. Enraged by what he had witnessed, Mr. Kingston decided that he could no longer sit by and allow this friendship to continue. The sight of Deborah and Collins together, laughing and talking as if nothing had changed, filled him with a sense of betrayal and fear. He had worked so hard to build a future for his daughter that was filled with success, status, and opportunity, and in his mind, Collins threatened to undo all of that. Determined to put an end to this relationship once and for all, Mr. Kingston resolved to take drastic measures, believing that only a decisive action could sever the bond between them. In a cold and calculated move, Mr. Kingston concocted a plan to have Collins arrested. He accused him of trespassing on their property, knowing full well that the charge was false. But Mr. Kingston was a powerful man, well-connected in the town, and he knew that his word would carry weight. He contacted the authorities, using his influence to ensure that the matter would be taken seriously. He didn't care about the truth, all he cared about was separating Collins from his daughter, no matter the cost. When the police arrived at Collins' home, he was completely taken by surprise. He had done nothing wrong, and the idea of being accused of a crime was unthinkable to him. But before he could even process what was happening, he found himself being handcuffed and led away. The cold metal around his wrists and the harsh words of the officers left him stunned and confused. He couldn't understand why this was happening or how things had escalated so quickly. At the police station, Collins was placed in a small, dimly lit room to wait. 
he felt a heavy weight settle in his chest, a mixture of fear, anger, and sadness. He knew he was innocent, but he also knew that fighting the charges would be nearly impossible given Mr. Kingston's power and influence. When Mr. Kingston finally arrived, his face was a mask of cold determination. He didn't waste any time with pleasantries. Instead, he confronted Collins with a chilling ultimatum. With a stern voice and an icy glare, Mr. Kingston threatened to destroy Collins' life if he didn't stay away from Deborah. He spoke of ruining Collins' reputation, ensuring that he would never find work in the town again, and making life unbearable for him and his family. Mr. Kingston was ruthless, making it clear that he would stop at nothing to protect his daughter's future, even if it meant crushing Collins in the process. Collins listened, his heart breaking with every word. He had no desire to bring trouble to Deborah or her family, but the idea of losing her forever was almost too much to bear. Yet, he knew he had no choice. Mr. Kingston's threats were not empty, and Collins was powerless against a man with so much wealth and influence. Despite the pain it caused him, Collins agreed to Mr. Kingston's demands. He promised to stay away from Deborah, knowing that it was the only way to protect himself and his family from further harm. As Collins was released from the station, the weight of the decision he had made pressed down on him. He walked away with a heavy heart, knowing that he had lost something precious, something that could never be replaced. The bond he had shared with Deborah had been torn apart by forces beyond his control, and the sense of betrayal lingered, leaving him feeling more alone than ever before. Meanwhile, as all this was happening, Deborah had been enjoying her return home, unaware of the turmoil brewing behind the scenes. She was happy to be back in the familiar surroundings of her childhood, reconnecting with old friends and neighbors who welcomed her with open arms. The town felt like a place of comfort, filled with memories of simpler times. Deborah threw herself into the joy of being back, visiting her favorite spots, catching up with people she hadn't seen in years, and rediscovering all the things she loved about her hometown. For weeks, everything seemed perfect. Deborah felt a sense of peace as she settled back into the rhythms of life in the town. She spent time with her parents, who were delighted to have their daughter home, and she began thinking about what her future might look like now that she was back. Life felt full of possibilities, and Deborah was excited to explore them. But then, without warning, everything changed. One day, Deborah began to feel unwell. It started with a slight fever and a general feeling of weakness. At first, she thought it was just a minor illness, nothing to be concerned about. But as the days passed, her condition quickly worsened. The fever grew higher, and she became increasingly fatigued. Deborah found herself unable to get out of bed, as her strength seemed to drain away with each passing hour. Her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Kingston, were deeply concerned. They called for the best doctors in town, hoping that someone would be able to diagnose what was wrong with their daughter. When the doctors arrived, they examined Deborah carefully, running tests and asking questions, but the answer they found was not what the Kingstons had hoped for. Deborah was suffering from a severe and aggressive infection, one that had spread through her body with alarming speed. The doctors explained that the situation was critical, Deborah's life was in serious danger, and they needed to act quickly to save her. The doctors told Mr. and Mrs. Kingston that the only way to give Deborah a fighting chance was to perform a blood transfusion. Her body needed the strength that only healthy blood could provide to fight off the infection. But when the doctors tested the blood types of her parents, they were met with a troubling discovery. Neither Mr. Kingston nor Mrs. Kingston's blood type matched Deborah's. This news hit the family like a thunderbolt. They had assumed that, as her parents, one of them would be able to help, but now they were faced with the harsh reality that they could do nothing but wait and hope that a suitable donor could be found in time. As Deborah lay in the hospital bed, her condition growing more desperate with each passing day, her parents were consumed by worry and fear. 
They watched helplessly as the doctors searched frantically for a donor whose blood type matched Deborah's, but the days slipped by with no success. The hospital staff worked tirelessly, but the longer it took to find a match, the more fragile Deborah's condition became. The once vibrant and joyful homecoming was now overshadowed by this life-threatening crisis, and the Kingstons were left praying for a miracle to save their beloved daughter. Days passed, and despite their best efforts, they couldn't find a donor with the right blood type. Collins, who had been avoiding town since his arrest, heard about Deborah's illness from a mutual friend. Without hesitation, he rushed to the hospital to see her. When he arrived, he was told about the urgent need for a blood transfusion. Without thinking twice, Collins offered to donate his blood. To everyone's relief, Collins' blood type was a perfect match. The transfusion was successful, and Deborah's condition improved rapidly. When she awoke and learned what Collins had done for her, she was overwhelmed with gratitude and love. Mr. Kingston, seeing how close he had come to losing his daughter, realized the depth of Colin's love for her. He finally understood that true friendship and love transcended social class. Humbled and grateful, Mr. Kingston apologized to Collins for his actions. He acknowledged that he had been wrong to judge Collins based on his background and admitted that Collins had proven his worth by saving Deborah's life. Mrs. Kingston, too, was moved by Colin's selflessness and joined her husband in asking for forgiveness. Deborah and Colin's friendship was stronger than ever. With her parents' blessing, their relationship blossomed into something more. The Kingstons, now fully supportive, welcomed Colin's into their family, no longer seeing him as a threat but as a blessing. In the end, Deborah and Colin's proved that true love and friendship could overcome any obstacle. Their bond, forged in childhood and tested by time and hardship, emerged stronger than ever, and they looked forward to a future filled with love and happiness.